What up, family? Get a new support of Mary Dad's Mary Today is so for Sunday in my city, Chicago, September 25th, 2022. It's also Daughter International uh, Day and Daughter National Day. They both came together at the same time on the same day. They said that normally doesn't happen. So I feel the need to um, tell my truth as though you've never heard it before. And, uh, Hopefully this will be the last time, you know. Um, if you're a new viewer, I was born May 25th, 1967. My name is Mary Lee Davis, a.k.a. Mary Mack, your ghetto news reporter and originator of rap music since the age of eight in 1975. At the age of six, I was in Chicago Sun-Times newspaper in 1973 for standing up for myself, telling somebody I can't... I don't know who the lady was. I do know it was a lady um, that I had got violated. I was being violated um, at the foster home, a home that I was at at the time, at the age of six in 1973. And because, you know, my higher power gave me the voice to speak out. They put me in the Chicago Sun-Times newspaper at the age of six in 1973. Now, I could have very well have gotten that news clipping when I went to visit my foster parents, whom I was with from the age of six in 1973 to about when I was uh, about 10 or 11. I left and went back, you know, a couple times because, you know, I, I was missing them. But everybody that came into my life pretty much was just surrounding me trying to keep a dirty little secret or whatever the case may be. And I believe I figured out what that dirty little secret is, and that's everybody coming up off of my blood, sweat, and tears, and my uh, adversities and controversies, that's what you want to call it, and making a name for themselves while at the same time trying to bury me in the truth. Um, my mother, Mary Lee Wright, allegedly, supposed to have been my mother, um, named me after her, Mary Lee. So that's why I say, let me put the dash between the mirror and the lead just in case my mother is behind this also because Biggie Small says, you know, in his um, song, 10 Crack Commandment, for enough money, number three, for enough money, your own mama be laying in the bushes, you know, trying to get you. Look, me being an originator of rap music and the biggest uh, genre of music that ever took off ever happened rap that is they never expected it they never saw it coming you understand what i'm saying see a gift is from god and surprise the kid y'all went to the alcoholics anonymous aa opening uh yesterday but i didn't go in i just kind of was trying to see how people would treat me on the outside i rode my bike and uh you know a lot of people I could see was kind of sickly or, you know, smoking a lot of cigarettes and, you know, I don't drink drugs, smoke or fornicate. But not only that, they gave me cancer, haters, because, you know, I don't drink drugs, smoke or fornicate. Due to a lot of adversities I've been through, it's a personal choice. But on uh, Mother's Day, May 8th of 2016, I was at a AA meeting, the mustard seed in my city, Chicago. And they were hating on me, even though I was homeless. And I had a few dollars, you understand what I'm saying? But it wasn't enough for me to really, you know, do what I had to do or whatever and stuff as far as uh, live my golden years, if that's what you want to call it. Basically, they railroaded me to get my rap legacy and to um, suppress the lies that were being told as far as Maya Angelou, you know, bringing people into the fold like Oprah Winfrey to keep her lie going. See, it's all about that 38, that smoking 38 that I never wanted from Chuck Dalton's gun shop. I was going to get a brand new gun back in the day, you know, because I felt I needed to protect myself as I was out here in my city, Chicago, selling general merchandise, music, this, that, and the third, and uh, making an honest living. And 
they kept stealing my gun, you know, either my car would get missing, my car would get um, stolen and my gun would be in the car or, you know, strange things was happening where my gun was coming up missing, okay? And so I went to go get another gun at Chuck Dollar's gun shop. And, you know, I was trying to get a new one. I think like a 25 automatic or something like that. And the white gun owner, shop owner, was like, check out this here, you know, 38. You know, and I wasn't planning on killing nobody or nothing. And I was like, he said, it's cheaper. I said, okay, cool, you know. I take it or whatever and stuff. And around that time, I was going through a whole lot of stuff. And, you know, I was trying to um, help my so-called family out with the family business, selling merchandise, trying to teach them how to be independent. And, of course, it all went to pox or whatever and stuff, you know. Um, I end up leaving my apartment on King Drive, selling everything, and moving in with my so-called ex-girlfriend, Donna Marie Evans, who used to be a real estate agent. If she's still alive, I don't know. Uh, uh, banker and, you know, whole, a lady of the night, all kinds of stuff. She was a sinister person, let's put it like that, but she had a son at the time when I met her. I was uh, 18 years old, and... She was uh, 27 and her son was five years old. But by this time in 1995, you know, I went to stay with her because I was going through some things and I wanted to, you know, you know, be around people who I thought, you know, somewhat cared about me. I grew up, like I said, you know, basically a foster child, you know, just whatever people doing whatever the most to me because they don't care. It would take a village to raise a child, take a village to destroy a child. You don't remember nothing else. Remember that. Long story short. I was, gave open my um, child abuse rap at the age of 17 in 1984. I gave her some information, three cassette tapes with my voice added to the sound of music and the Martin Luther King, I Have a Dream speech in 1995 at the age of 28. Now, around this time, like I said, I was staying with my ex-girlfriend who was a sinister and all this, you know, and I found myself doing more drugs with her than I was doing by myself. So some came over me. My high power was like, you got to clean up your act and stuff. So I wasn't drinking drugs and smoking or fornicating, you know, after about a couple of months with her or whatever and stuff. And once she realized I was writing my book, What is Stay Slash, Coming Out Hard and With God, you know, um, that's when the sinister stuff started with her again, you know. And now this time her son, Mario, is about 16 years old. I gave him a um, birthday card with my signature. You know, I, I said, you know, my signature is going to be worth more than Michael Jordan's, and sure enough, it is. Um, I didn't hear back from Oprah Winfrey after I sent her my information. I thought she was getting off the air in 1995, so I hurried up and sent her some stuff, and she, you know, bit, if that's what you want to call it. And that's how she became a billionaire because she heard my real essence and, and you know, what I really was fighting for because when I put my voice to the to um, the Martin Luther King I Have a Dream speech, they really knew that I was going to be somebody. Now, older people, you know, are the ones that's gotten these young people and Oprah being, you know, younger than Maya Angelou and whom I believe is... Oprah's real mother, but I can't prove it, but they I seen a picture where they look similar alike or whatever and stuff. See, it's all about lies people are telling, you know. They say books, movies are corrupt, suicide is way up. Um, Richard Dimplefield, a singer, said that. Long story short, you know, um, they put me in a psych ward, tried to make it seem as though I was crazy because my uh, Mario, you know, had that spirit in him or whatever, that devilish spirit probably his mama gave him or whatever. And, you know, God told me to hold him down at 16, you know, on the bed because I felt as though, you know, he was plotting something against me. And sure enough, when the police came, he said, and she's got a gun. I never told him, never told his mother, but I did call the police um, on myself, like maybe a few weeks before the incident happened with me and Mario. And I said, I got a gun to my head and I 
feeling suicidal because I was feeling real demonic in that, you know, for real. And um, in, the, in the apartment, um, which is in Hyde Park, uh, 5419 South Woodline, apartment 1A. Now, I'm worth a whole lot of money, so a lot of people are going to do a whole lot of things to try to keep the secret, and that's why I'm at this trap building, 6210 South Kenbark Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60637, with a bunch of guys, derelicts, and drug addicts. It's supposed to be a recovery building, but they lied to get me here, just wanted my signature to try to, you know, off me and stuff. I've been catching hell ever since. Now, where does this tie into Maya Angelou? Maya Angelou and Oprah Winfrey evidently knew each other, whatever, and then they came up with a plot to try to um, take my... Um, legacy and they use my story i know why this is where my angelo i believe came up with i know why the caves burst sink you understand what i'm saying by what i've been through five guys violated me i was always being violated trafficked, and all that now whether her story is true or not and it's tying in together. I always said that my Angelo was supposed to come first, Oprah, and then myself. But somehow or another, they're trying to give it to my ex-girlfriend, who was a G.O. witness, Luana Jordan Jacobs, and who worked for Blue Cross Blue Shields, and who I believe had my name on insurance list in order to, um, you know, cash in. Okay, so that's the jits of it. You know, everybody around me is just eating off my plate. I've never had a new car, a day at a spa, for real, for real, and a real vacation other than some trouble. You understand what I'm saying? Real talk. So... I went to the AA meeting opening. I know I'm all over the place. If you're a Rick Meyer, you'll figure it out. You understand what I'm saying? I went to the AA open at the um, Chicago State College School or whatever in my city, Chicago, on King Drive. My ex-girlfriend, Lawana Joy Jacobs, when I met her in 1993, I believe it was, she um, used to go there. You understand? Real tough. So she stalked me for six months to get my attention, and I finally got with her. And then when the shit hit the fan after about 15 years and her not moving in, you know, all hell broke loose. Long story short, when I was at the um, Chicago State University for the AA meeting, I didn't go in, like I said. I, you know, I stopped. When I was going back, I seen a, um, you know, a window that was broken or whatever and stuff. And that's, it had Gwendolyn Brooks on it. And then, um, you know, I looked in, it, um, the glass that wasn't broken, and I seen Maya Angelou. It had something to do with writers. You understand? Now, they don't want me to be recognized because as a writer, which I am, and I'm very good, and people are jealous, and I understand, you know, competition, right? But long story short, they're trying to write me out of her story, his story, our story, my story, and act as if I never existed. And that's why everywhere I go, Trump follows me. You understand what I'm saying? And hopefully, you know, when I put the links into this video whatever and then i'll call maya angelou versus mary lee because i see oprah i believe she really did like me you understand as a person but maya angelou got into her ear i've seen pictures with maya and uh oprah in bed together you know it's just some sick shit you understand what i'm saying i don't even want to go through it you know how i do though hate to be rushing and stuff but i'm trying to um stop all this dumb shit for real and i will because it ain't getting me nowhere but um I ran across on my bike yesterday um, a picture, a, a bike in a yard or whatever and stuff, and had a cage bird or whatever and stuff. So I felt like, you know, I should talk about it and stuff. So, you know, long story short, I know why the cage bird is All right, so, you know, break the ground. And I flipped the Bible. Now, this the 10. All I do is win, okay? 10 City for real, for real. It's devotion, okay? Everybody know I'm known for 10 City, you know? Real talk. I'm a real person. I'm not a sinister person. So, you know, God ain't going to lie to me. Okay, so this is on. You see the bread right here? I ate so that it's the money. It says, Mississippi, I never, I, uh, I need my bread, a.k.a. money. Real so You see, you see the bread. I ate so much bread back in the day. And then Oprah had some recently I seen about some bread. Now you flip it. That's first. That's the second book of Chronicles. They coming for they coming for me hard or whatever. So, you know, I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, and six. You see the bread, don't you? I need my money. I never lose. 
Real, real Mary Mac Myers, step your game up. Peace.